Good morning, Patricia. It's John Muir here, sitting in my castle in uh, Tunbridge Wells, England. Um, nice to be with you all. I thought, as a subject today, I would talk about forward growth, because in my mind, that is the most important aspect of orthodontics. If you don't get forward growth, you won't really get very good results. You can always get straight teeth, but we know there's a lot more required than that. I'll start by sharing a few slides. This is uh, my home from the outside, and um, um, again, beautifully situated in rural England. But uh, I will proceed with a series of slides, and um, this is um, the title, that's me, the title here, um, How Important is Forward Growth? Well, as I've said, it is very important. Let's have a look at the screen and we'll see that I'm saying that forward growth of both the maxilla and the mandible are essential. Now, that really is very difficult for most orthodontists because in actual fact, I don't think I know any orthodontic treatment or any individual orthodontist who can create forward growth of either the maxilla or the mandible. In my experience, all their treatment is retractive and sometimes quite severely so. Well, what about orthopedics or functional appliances? I know many of you in Brazil use these and you get very nice results, I've seen them. But when you actually analyze the changes, the maxilla, I think I can say always goes back. When you use intermaxillary traction, which is essentially what um, orthopedics is, um, you will pull the upper jaw back while you bring the lower jaw forward. Now, the lower jaw does come forward a, a bit, but not very much. It also goes down quite a bit. That is the drawback with functional orthopedics. And I think most of you would agree that it would be very unwise to tackle a big overjet, maybe 10 millimeters or more. If you try that with functional appliances, you will usually get quite severe vertical growth. And of course, that is just what we don't want. Well, what about orthotropics? As you know, I believe it is a better option than either of the other two, but many of you wouldn't agree with me. But one thing I want to demonstrate to you today is that you can take both the maxilla and the mandible forward quite some distance, and I'm talking of five, ten millimeters, maybe more. And you can then control the amount you take each one forward so that they meet when you've done that. No good taking one forward and not the other. You must match them. So I will show a series of slides now where I illustrate that. We'll start perhaps with um, our primitive man. Here he is with his age to age occlusion and um, well-worn teeth. You can see the degree to which he wore his teeth down. That was simply attrition because, of course, he had to eat a huge quantity of food, which most of which had relatively low calorific value. I will compare that now. If we look at this outline, we can see where his individual teeth were. And if I remove the original skull, you can see that is the outline of his incisors and his first molars. Now, I, years ago, did some research which I based on work done by Bjork, um, Bjorn Bjork, a fantastic researcher. Anyway, he um, traced the average of 1,500 Swedish soldiers. And this was an average mark you, of modern Swedes. And he traced them out and he placed them like that. 
Now you can see what has happened, or certainly the difference, between our primitive ancestors and the majority of modern Europeans. Now if you look, the maxilla is, is um, both of the jaws are quite a long way back, but look at the first molars. I would say it's an inch and a half or more back. The incisors, probably three quarters of an inch. Really big measurements um, uh, in terms of facial appearance. So um, uh, what, what does this do to the appearance and how can we reverse it? Um, I've done quite a bit of research myself. And these are x-ray, well this is a picture of a, an ancient skull that we found in a cave in um, Somerset, England. And from it I constructed the picture on the right. Now you would know that Steiner's original analysis was done from a small sample of his um, relatively nice looking students. Um, I have found that his Steiner's sample is much too retusive. The face is too far back. So um, I tried moving it forward. Um, Mac Marla moved it forward about um, five or more millimeters to create his um, uh, lion, the, what he, that he calls the nason vertical. But I still think that is too far back. I think the SNA angle should be almost a hundred degrees, although Steiner says it should be about 81, uh, McNamara says it should be about 90. So there is a big difference between us. Um, and if we look at the difference in the terms of the shape of the face, this is um, work done uh, with um, Tims and uh, Trenuth, um, they compared the basal angle of a range of skulls. And the ideal angle is, well, we're not quite sure, but somewhere around about um, 100, 100, sorry, 95, um, 90 perhaps. Anyway, um, he found that the majority of modern humans were, I think, 138 degrees, which shows how far open the saddle angle becomes. And you can see how this really distorts the face. It is the saddle angle that I believe is most crucial in determining facial shape. If it is high, you will have a long vertical face. If it is low, you will have a nice forward growing face, which of course is what we all want. Now I'll show you this as an illustration of just that and why it might happen. This is a brother and sister. Um, they had the same upbringing and they were both breastfed for over a year. But the daughter was spoon fed from a few months old. And I have always felt that it is spoon feeding that does most of the harm. This causes the tongue between tooth habit to develop, which you can see she displays there. Her brother refused to take food from a spoon, continued to breastfeed until he could eventually chew on his own without needing to be spoon fed. You can see his facial development is entirely different. One is vertical, one is horizontal. And as I say, we wish to emulate the little boy on the right. Now, um, I'll move on to the next slide, except it doesn't seem to be moving. Sorry, William, I'm going to need your help. Something's gone wrong. I was moving it forward, but yeah. it's... it's You've done it. Yes, why didn't it have... Anyway, okay. Um, this is an example of the difference that the maxilla will make. If it is forward, you've got a really attractive face, like the girl on the left. If it is back, 
you'll get a really unattractive face like the man on the right. Notice how his forehead has sloped, how his nose is enlarged. Notice the big bump there. Notice how the mid face is set back. Um, and that is accepted by everyone to be a very unattractive face. Um, but if I now move to um, uh, another slide, I might ask you a question. Do you think that good cheekbones could make you a princess? Well, I think there's reasonable grounds to think that might be true. Um, certainly, um, Megan has very nice cheekbones, and I'm sure that was one of the reasons why her husband found her. Um, to continue, this is the thing that I find that orthotropics can achieve, which no other appliance that I know of can, and that is substantial forward growth of the maxilla. If you can't get that, you can't really treat um, a face to make it attractive. Um, you can see that um, this boy was um, uh, treated by reducing his upper indicator line. Now I haven't time to describe that, but essentially it is taking the upper incisors forward to where they should be. But you just tip them forward by pushing on the incisal edge. You then teach the child to keep their lips together and their tongue on their palate. The whole tooth will then move forward and up. Now, orthodontists and most dentists have never seen this because they've never done it. But I've done it hundreds of times, and I know that if you tip the upper incisors forward, many people call it splaying the incisors, um, and then correct the lip seal and the tongue on the palate, the roots will then also go forward. You can see with that boy, initially he had one or two millimetres of space for his upper lateral incisor. But the end of, tr of the treatment, he has lots of space for the in in lateral incisor and more than enough space for the canine. And if you look at the horizontal growth of the face, it is probably around 10, maybe 12 millimetres further forward, the whole face. That's because, of course, he brought his mandible forward afterwards. But that's another story I'll talk about in a minute. I can show you other cases where I've done the same. See again, with this lad, there is absolutely no room for his upper lateral incisor. Many people would consider extractions at that point. Um, but no, we proclined his upper teeth. We taught him to keep his mouth shut with his tongue firmly on his palate. And the upper incisors just marched forward. And in a sense, the whole maxilla just marched forward. And here I'm talking, what, eight, ten millimetres. That is a huge amount. And of course, it also makes a big difference in the shape of the face. You do need to be able to make the mandible grow forward as well. But fortunately, orthotropics can do that. Although I'm afraid that um, fixed appliances really can't, and even functional appliances don't do so very much. But if we look now at an example of what actually happens during these cases. This is a, a section from a paper I wrote on forward growth. I did some research with a very good in fact, top of the line orthodontists. Um, and we limited this research to patients who had overjets of more than 10 millimeters. Now that's quite unusual. Only about 5% of the population have overjets that large. But I, he's agreed to treat 
10 cases doing it his way, and I treated it with uh, 10 cases doing it with orthotropics. He was using um, fixed appliances um, and uh, I was using removable appliances. But if you look carefully, you will see that his case is on the right. The, at the end and the beginning of treatment, the incisors are more or less in the same position. The overjet has gone, but it has pulled back the upper incisors and pushed forward the lower incisor. I don't see a lot of skeletal movement there. If you look carefully at the slide on the left, the profile on the left, you'll see that the maxilla has moved forward substantially, but so has the mandible. What is really significant is the actual direction of growth at Gnathian. I think that is very important and all of you should study the growth of the Gnathian. It should grow in a direction I think of about 35 degrees. Most patients who are treated with orthodontic treatment, I find the Gnathian grows in a direction of between 60 and 75 degrees. If you treat adults with fixed appliances, I find the growth direction is often more than 90 degrees. In other words, the face actually goes backwards, but of course they're not growing. Anyway, the average direction of growth of the cases that I treated with orthotropics was 24 degrees more horizontal than the average of the cases treated with fixed appliances. Now, that is an absolutely huge difference. Most orthodontists would be pleased to get a few degrees improvement, but 24 degrees is a massive change. And of course, it results in a very different facial shape at the end of treatment. One of the patients that took took part in this particular study, I knew and I was able to recall her, I think about 15 years later. And um, that was really quite astounding. This is what she looks like originally. Really, I think you'd say by any standards, a very severe malocclusion. Now her upper incisors were sticking out, as they say, a long way, but if you look at her face, the whole of it is flat. You may not be able to see that, and I know that many orthodontists are quite unable to recognize a flat face, but to me she is flat. If you look under her eye, her cheek descends almost vertically. Well, we treated her with orthotropics. Um, she was, at, as I say, part of this study group. Um, this is what she looked like at the end of treatment. And I was able to get her to come back some 15 or so years later. Um, and she really has hardly changed. And that is the advantage of orthotropics. If you take all the teeth forward, there's plenty of room for them. Therefore, there's no reason why they should crowd. In fact, you should be able to finish with space behind the wisdom teeth. So you finish with 32 teeth and they should be straight for the rest of the patient's life. But in addition, you can see that the forward growth makes a big difference to the face itself. Now I've talked about the mandibular growth, but I need to describe that a little bit too. Here is a patient um, who was waiting for surgery, actually. She'd been told that there was no way of reducing her overjet other than cutting her mandible, as you know, into three bits, bolting it together again in the forward position. But she uh, um, was came to me for a second opinion. And I said, no, I don't think you need surgery. We can do that with orthotropics. So she wore her plouts well and you need to, you would all know that orthotropic is not an easy appliance to wear or to adjust. 
Anyway, she wore it well, and you can see the change in her face, and indeed the forward movement of her mandible, as a result of the forward growth. And of course, this is what everybody should have. Um, now, I have created a measuring device. I call it a gnathiometer, um, to measure the forward growth of gnathium. You can't see it very clearly there, but you superimpose on the forehead, just at the nasion here, and 50 centimeters, sorry, millimeters above. You superimpose it there. You then have a scale here, which you lay over, it's transparent. So you lay over a life-size picture of the patient. You can then see within a millimetre how far forward or back the mandible has grown. And of course this is invaluable information and uh, you should, with any orthotropic treatment, be able to bring uh, the average patient forward um, 8, 10, maybe if you're lucky 15, sometimes 20 millimetres. Depends of course on their age when you start. But this, again, is a huge distance. Now, here's a girl that I took forward. You can see her relatively flat maxilla to begin with. She had actually a slight class 3 relationship. Now, many of you orthodontists and certainly general dentists are horrified by this stage of treatment. I mentioned before, we move the incisors into the right position. But of course, during her previous vertical growth, all the other teeth have moved out of position. So at this point here, only the upper central incisors are in the right position. All the rest of her teeth are in the wrong position. We then move all the rest of the teeth and the lower jaw into the right position to get a nice shaped face. I know it is a completely different method from any I've ever seen taught, but I hope you can understand the logic. That is why the indicator line, I mentioned that, is so important. It will tell you where to put the upper and lower incisors so that you can then reposition all the other teeth in the right position. And that is how you can achieve a total of total correction um, with a stable result and no extraction. But we can measure the same, uh, this is a boy, and I think you can see here that I measured him with the uh, uh, goniometer, and uh, I could see that he had grown forward, I think, over 10 millimetres. But both his upper jaw and his lower jaw have come forward. Look at the contours here, and this is where you get a big difference. It's quite different from the contours here. Now, that is partly due to the change in the maxilla, but mostly due to the change in the saddle angle. I talked about that at the beginning of my talk. The saddle angle is very important because it controls this facial change. You may think you're moving the maxilla or mandible, but in reality, most of that change is due to the closure of the saddle angle. I think that's all I need to say for today. I hope I've given you something to think about, and certainly um, you should learn about orthotropics. Um, it's a complex um, treatment, but there is no doubt that in the future it will overtake all orthodontic treatment and I think also orthopedic treatment as well.